LWO on WeatherNet. Uh, liftoff conditions been pretty good. ESTS is ready for launch. Ignition. Liftoff. Falcon 9 has cleared the tower. Ten. Nine. Eight. Side booster ignition. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Good morning. It's Wednesday, March 9th, and you're looking at a live view of Falcon 9 as it awaits its 8.45 a.m. Eastern Time launch from Florida's Cape Canaveral Space Force Station at Launch Complex 40. My name is Yomezo, and I'm joining you bright and early on the West Coast today from our headquarters in Hawthorne, California. I'll be your host for our 41st overall Starlink launch this morning. And if you don't know, Starlink is a satellite internet constellation designed and manufactured by SpaceX. Starlink can provide high-speed, low-latency internet to people living in remote and rural locations around the globe. Our launch today will be taking 48 Starlink satellites into low Earth orbit. For today's launch, we won't have ground station coverage of payload deployment, which is planned to happen a little after T plus one hour. So this means we won't have live audio or visual confirmation of payload deployment in real time. And because of this, we will end our webcast just after second stage engine cutoff or SECO-1 and confirm deployment on social media platforms once we regain coverage at T plus one hour and 19 minutes. Yesterday, we celebrated International Women's Day with the awesome women at SpaceX that helped make our mission a reality every single day. The photos you're seeing on your screen are just some of the women who helped make our work here at SpaceX possible. For over three decades, the United States has recognized the month of March as Women's History Month. It's an opportunity to celebrate all the amazing women that have made contributions across the world to history, culture, science, education, politics, and so much more. To that end, we celebrate all the women at SpaceX whose contributions are getting us closer and closer to our ultimate goal of making a multi-planetary species. Now, as you see on your screen, the weather down in Florida is looking really good, and the forecast is currently showing 80% favorable for liftoff. In addition to the weather, the range, vehicle, and satellites are all trending green for an on-time liftoff. And if for some reason we don't lift off today, we do have a backup opportunity tomorrow morning, Thursday, March 10th at 8.22 a.m. Eastern Time. For now, let's take a closer look at the Falcon 9 sending our Starlink satellites to space today. What you see on your screen is a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket ready for our 10th launch in just 10 weeks of 2022. Our two-stage rocket stands 70 meters tall, or roughly the same height as a 20-story building. And starting from the bottom, we have the first stage, also referred to as the booster, which makes up about 60% of the entire length of the Falcon 9 vehicle. The dark soot you see around the lower part of the first stage are remnants from its previous launches. Now, this particular booster has supported three previous missions, Cosmos SkyMed, which launched a little over a month ago, and STP-2 and Arabsat 6A as Falcon Heavy side boosters in 2019. As the name Falcon 9 suggests, attached to the bottom of the first stage are the nine Merlin M1D engines. Now, these engines accelerate the vehicle through the Earth's atmosphere and into various orbits in space. Moving on up, we have the inner stage, and as you can see on your screen, the carbon fiber inner stage is a distinct black color because it is unpainted TPS or thermal protection system. The inner stage is mated to the Falcon 9 tanks in Hawthorne and typically stays mated until launch. Now, although this composite structure is officially part of the first stage, it also connects the first and second stages, as well as houses the pneumatic pushers that allow for stage separation during flight. The inner stage also houses the Merlin vacuum engine or MVAC engine of the second stage. 
Now, though very similar to the Merlin 1D engines of the first stage, that MVAC engine on the second stage has a much larger nozzle that allows the second stage to perform better in the vacuum of space. It gives us a more efficient rocket engine that gets better performance. As you can see on your screen, the white portion of the Falcon 9 above the black inner stage is that second stage. After the first and second stages separate about two and a half minutes into flight, the second stage will ignite that single MVAC engine to carry the Starlink payload to its desired orbit. Following separation from the second stage, we will be attempting to recover the first stage for a fourth time on our drone ship, a shortfall of Gravitas. If successful, it will mark the 110th recovery of a Falcon first stage, including Falcon heavies. Now above the second stage is the payload fairing, and that nose cone structure on the very top of the rocket is what protects the Starlink satellites until we reach the vacuum of space. Around three minutes into flight, once we've exited Earth's atmosphere, we will jettison those fairing halves and attempt to retrieve them once they return back to Earth. You may be able to tell that the fairing halves protecting our Starlink satellites today are brand new. They are looking pristine there on your screen. And we do plan to recover and reuse these fairing halves again using our recovery vessel, Doug. The next few weeks are big ones for us here at SpaceX. This Monday, March 14th, marks the 20th anniversary of our company's founding. Those of you who have followed us for a long time might remember some of the notable firsts captured in the footage you're seeing, seeing here. Now, our first successful Falcon 1 launch, our first Falcon 9 launch, the first time Dragon visited the ISS, the first time we landed a booster on land, the first time we landed on a drone ship, and of course, the first time we sent humans to space. It's been an amazing ride so far, and we don't expect that to change anytime soon. At the end of this month, we'll launch our first mission of private astronauts to space uh, with the Axiom-1 crew to the International Space Station, followed just a couple weeks later by our fifth launch of NASA astronauts to the ISS with Crew-4. A big thanks to the entire SpaceX team for working hard every day to create a future we can all get excited about. The latest weather forecast from Space Launch Delta 45 shows that we are 80% favorable for liftoff today. The vehicle, satellites, and range are all looking good for an on-time liftoff just a few minutes from now at 8.45 a.m. Eastern Time. The next major milestone you're about to see on the screen involves the transporter erector, or TE, which is that truss structure to the, to the left of the Falcon 9 vehicle. Heard the call out that the strong back retraction process has begun. Uh, so to prepare for that process, the TE clamps, which you can barely see below that fairing, um, will open and then the transporter erector will begin to pull slightly away from the rocket until the hydraulics pull the TE even further away from Falcon 9 at T0 as it lifts off from the pad. You can see on your screen there the clamp arms are opening right now. Now the transporter erector is the structure that provides liquids, gases, and electrical connections to the second stage as well as air conditioning to the payload fairing and the Starlink satellites inside. At this point, both the first and second stages are nearly fully loaded with one million pounds of kerosene fuel and liquid oxygen. Now, the white clouds that you see around the vehicle is the chilled gas inside the vehicle. 
above the LOX tank liquid surface that we sometimes vent overboard to maintain the pressure in the tank as needed. We just finished that stage one LOX load. And again, when that uh, gas comes out of the vehicle into the warmer Florida air, the humid air will condense into clouds made out of water, and that's similar to when you have a cold glass of water and condensation forms around it. So we just finished prop loading of the first stage, and the second stage should finish up here in just about 30 seconds um, to finish its liquid oxygen loading. The reason that we wait till so late in the countdown to finish our liquid oxygen loading is uh, because it is super chilled, we want to give it as little time to warm up as possible. Second stage. stage two, load complete. There it is, second stage locks loading is complete. At T minus one minute here shortly, Falcon 9 will be in startup, and this is where the Falcon internal flight computers will take over the countdown. And this is also when the first and second stages will begin pressurizing for launch uh, using the onboard helium systems that they carry. So again, that white cloud coming from the Falcon 9 is that uh, venting from the tank to maintain pressure. Falcon is in startup. Falcon 9 is in startup. Now, in just a few seconds here, we'll wait for the final launch director. Go for launch. Time to let the American broomstick fly and hear the sounds of freedom. LD is go for launch. LD has given that go for launch. All systems are go. Let's listen in to the terminal countdown and watch as Falcon 9 minus 30 seconds. takes our Starlink satellites to space. Minus 15. Minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And just full power. And lift off. Falcon 9, 7, 4, 10. Vehicles pitching out. Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, carrying our stack of 48 telemetry nominal. Carrying our stack of 48 Starlink satellites to low Earth orbit. Moments ago, we throttled the 9 M1D engines down, reducing the speed by decreasing the flow Vehicle of supersonic fuel to the engine. Now that's in preparation for max Q, which is the maximum aerodynamic pressure that the vehicle will see coming up in just a few seconds. Max Q. There's Max Q, and we will have three events happening here shortly. We will have main engine cutoff, stage separation, and second engine startup one. Now, main engine cutoff is where all nine of those M1D engines currently burning will shut off to sl slow the vehicle down in preparation for the next event, stage separation. Now this is where the first and second stages will separate. Now the start of our second engine, MVAC Chill, has started, as you just heard. Now after stage separation, the first stage will make its way back down to Earth for landing. 
uh, whereas the second stage will continue on its journey to the third event of Second Engine Startup One. That's where that single MVAC engine will light up and propel the second stage along with the Starlink satellites to orbit. The cool views of the first stage with, that Earth, with the Earth in the background. Just about 10 seconds from main engine cutoff. Stage separation confirmed. Can see on those cool, you can see on those cool live views of the first and second stage, uh, you can see the fairing have just popped off there, um, but we did have a successful main engine cutoff stage separation. Fairing separation confirmed. And second engine startup one. And as you saw, we had a successful fairing deployment. Again, SpaceX has reflown the Falcon fairing half since 2019, but again, the fairing halves flying on today's mission are brand new and we will be attempting to recover them on uh, our recovery vessel, Doug, for a future mission. You can see cool live views from the Falcon 9 first stage on your left with its grid fins deployed, and the second stage on your right with that single MVAC engine burning. As second stage heads towards its targeted drop-off orbit for our Starlink satellites, stage one will complete two burns in order to make its way back down to Earth. Now the first is the entry burn, and this is where three... Acquisition of signal, Bermuda. The entry burn is where three of the M1D engines will reignite to help slow the stage down as it re-enters the upper parts of the Earth's atmosphere. The second burn is the landing burn, and this is a single engine burn that brings the vehicle speed down rapidly in order to land on our drone ship. If you're just joining us, we've had a successful liftoff of Falcon 9 from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station's Slick 40, and right now you're looking at live views from the first and second stages with the first stage currently making its way back to our drone ship, a shortfall of Gravitas in the Atlantic Ocean, and the second stage carrying our stack of 48 Starlink satellites to their low Earth orbit. And this is our 10th mission of 2022. In fact, it's the 10th mission in 10 weeks and the seventh Starlink mission of 2022 so far. Vehicle on nominal trajectory. Now, the Merlin engines on that first stage are optimized for sea level, so they achieve 190,000 pounds of thrust during ascent and descent. And in contrast, that MVAC engine that you see on the right side of your screen is optimized for 220,500 pounds of thrust in vacuum. And the main difference between these two engines is the size of that nozzle that you can see on the second stage there. It's much bigger than the M1Ds on the first stage. There's also a cool glamour shot of the Falcon 9 grid fins on those live views from the first stage on your left. And these are four hypersonic grid fins that are positioned near the top of the first stage. And they help to guide and steer that first stage as it re-enters the Earth's atmosphere and uh, helps orient it as it comes down back to Earth. The Falcon 9 first stage is also equipped with four landing legs made out of carbon fiber aluminum honeycomb, and they're placed symmetrically around the base of the rocket. So you'll want to watch out for their deployment just prior to landing. We're coming up on our entry burn here shortly in just about 20 seconds here. And again, this is a three engine burn meant to slow that first stage down as it hits the thicker layers of the Earth's atmosphere. The burn will last about 20 seconds or so. Stage one FTS is saved. Stage one entry burn startup. 
had the start of our stage one entry burn. Stage two FTS is saved. Vehicle on nominal trajectory. Stage one entry burn shut down. Just had a successful stage one entry burn. We're just under a minute to the stage one landing burn. That should start at about T plus eight minutes and 25 seconds. And for those who follow along, that entry burn that we just did is the reason that we have soot on that first stage. So when we fly through our own, or in Falcon 9, when Falcon 9 flies through its own plume during that entry burn, uh, that plume deposits the soot from our carbon-based fuel as it burns onto the sides of the first stage. Start of terminal guidance. Coming up really shortly on stage one, landing burn start. Stage one, landing burn. We've started our stage one landing burn. We may or may not have videos for this. We should have second engine stage cutoff. Stage one landing like deploy. Here shortly as well. And back engine cutoff. There's second engine cutoff. We're waiting on confirmation of that stage one landing. Nominal orbital insertion. Did just get confirmation of a good orbit from our second stage carrying our Starlink satellites. And we are now waiting for the deployment of our 48 Starlink satellites, which is scheduled to occur about a little under an hour from now. Expected loss of signal, Cape. It looks like we did get confirmation from the teams that we did have a successful first stage landing, even though we haven't received any video or live views from that. Um, but this does mark the 110th successful landing of our Falcon first stage, including Falcon Heavy. Um, we did have a good orbit for our uh, second stage, and we're now just waiting on the deployment of our Starlink satellites. As I mentioned before, we won't have live audio or visual confirmation for payload deployment either currently due to lack of ground station coverage. There's that Falcon 9 first stage on our drone ship. But again, we will regain signal from our ground station at T plus one hour and 19 minutes. Uh, so for those of you who are interested, we will keep the audio only countdown nets up on our YouTube channel and we'll confirm successful payload deployment of our Starlink satellites on our social media channels. But with that, cool view of the first stage on the drone ship that will bring today's webcast to an end. Our team at SpaceX would like to send a big thank you to the Range and Federal Aviation Administration for supporting our mission. Of course, thank you to our viewers and stage all of our- Stage one landing confirmed. <laughs> there's that call out for stage one landing confirmed. But of course, thank you to all of our viewers and all of our Starlink customers using our service at this time. And if you're interested in signing up for Starlink, head over to starlink.com. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you again soon.